today I'm going to address the questions that have been selected by our mentors for week two um, of our course on what is a mind. Um, they've selected four questions and also extracted a sort of a, um, there's this, uh, n not a specific question, but rather a recurring theme um, and turned it into a question of their own. So I'm going to, in effect, be addressing five questions. Um, the first question is this. Do you see the four defining properties of a mind as mandatory, that is, as necessary conditions for a mind to exist? or just as loose propositions to help us grapple with the concept? So my answer to that question is that, uh, indeed, I do see these four properties as mandatory. Um, on the other hand, I am just proposing these four properties. Um, I am open to discussion. Uh, it would be very interesting to hear whether any of you think that the four properties uh, can be reduced to three um, or less, and uh, indeed if any of you think that there are additional mandatory properties um, for a mind to exist. So this is a starting point, it's an attempt to define mandatory necessary conditions for a mind to exist, but it's an extremely difficult uh, question and uh, I would be um, surprised uh, if there aren't other views on the matter. So let's see whether further questions along these lines come uh, in, uh, in, further, in, in future weeks. Having said that, I want to add that of the four properties that I am claiming are mandatory, necessary conditions for a mind to exist, that is, firstly, subjectivity, secondly, the capacity for consciousness, thirdly, intentionality, and fourthly, agency. The last of those four, I think it admits of degrees. Uh, I think that you can have very simple minds with next to no agency and very complex minds, the complexity of which is defined by the degree of agency. So uh, on that fourth uh, criterion, perhaps the um, issue of the necessity of the property is a little more um, ambiguous than with regard to the other three properties.